everyone. Uh, it's a privilege for me to introduce our guest today, uh, Mr. Surendranath Reddy. Uh, he is a serial entrepreneur, MD, and CEO of Clinova Research Labs and Fresh and Safe Private Limited. He is having 20 years of experience in core lab medical imaging services, agriculture, and food business. He is involved in supplying safe agri-fresh produce food to all major chains managing services for biopharma in medical imaging, clinical data management and data analysis. He established relations with Europe and US based pharmaceutical companies, universities and CROs and has executed around 18 clinical studies and also provided various digital marketing services for life sciences, healthcare and scientific companies. Mr. Surindranath is passionate about the entrepreneurship, cricket and human relations. Uh, to mention specifically, he was a big, tea, big time core all rounder in Kingsway Cricket Club of Scotland, Windsor Club of London. We thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation. Over to you, sir. So right now, is it? My screen is visible. Uh, Yes, sir. The screen is visible, sir. Oh, hi, all the youngsters. Good afternoon, all of you. Hope you are all doing great and safe in this COVID. Good afternoon, Surendra Reddy Garu. <laughs> Just now, my my mic has been unmuted, so I am able to speak to you. How are <laughs> you, sir? <laughs> yeah, I am good, madam. Madam, madam. Yes, sir. <laughs> And so we are looking forward to your uh, uh, enriching lecture, sir. Yeah. So now uh, the the screen is fine. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can see the screen. So hope all the students and the uh, families are doing well, safe in this COVID and post COVID. Uh, Thanks for this opportunity, especially for the Madhuri Madam and Ashwini Garu and the Bhavan's management. Quite excited to talk about the entrepreneurial journey and my experiences and general business setups and for the career for the BBA, MBA graduates. How can they take it forward their life? I will run you through the PowerPoint presentation on this entrepreneurship and after finishing it, we can talk on different queries and question and answers. So entrepreneurship in this we will be talking about ideation, like how an idea can be created innovations, implementation of the business idea and marketing of this and how do you generate revenues, funds, etc. This is the entrepreneurial journey. You can see the basic things here in the cotton format, innovation, business knowledge, how they are related for an entrepreneur and how a team and the leadership skills, a risk tolerance, assertiveness are related. So it's a small cartoon where you can see all the things together as a workflow. Sir, the is not yeah. visible. The PPT is not visible? Uh, no, sir. Uh, Ashwini, can it, you see the PPT? It is visible, ma'am. It is visible, yes. Uh, sir, you are in the slide of success, right, sir? Yeah, yeah. Achha, achha. yeah, yeah. I, now, I don't know why it's yeah. not seen in my screen. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it is visible, sir. It is. It is visible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. If I switch off the video, I think this is fine for you. 
Yes, sir. Fine. No. Okay. So the sorry for all these initial confusions, guys. Uh, take it easy. So as you know, the success in everyone's life, we feel that it's quite straight and vertical or horizontal. It looks like that, but it goes up and down, forward and backward, right and left. But if our aim is great, we will be achieving the success somehow, going left and right, forward and backward. So this looks like this. Why we talking about success here is entrepreneurial journey might succeed if we work hard, if we aim right, if we divert, divert ourselves, we might not achieve because it's in a risky area. I'll just tell you about who is an entrepreneur, what is entrepreneurship. Probably in your management studies, all of your faculty would have taught you about this. What is an entrepreneur? What is an entrepreneurship? So an entrepreneur who creates a new business, he takes care of all the risks and he might enjoy the rewards if you get it. The process of setting up a business is an known as entrepreneurship. These entrepreneurs commonly known as are seen as innovators, new idea generators, new ideations, new goods produced or manufactured or invented, new services offered. Whoever does all these things in the society or in the country in our places, those are all called as entrepreneurs and the platform is called the business, which entire we call it as entrepreneurship. This is a procedure where we create the business. These entrepreneurs play a key role in the economy, employment generation in our society, using their skills, teamwork and the necessary initiatives by overcoming all the problems and bringing in new ideas to the market. Entrepreneurship that proves to be successful, whoever takes the risks and whoever does the startups, they will have the profits, fame and continued growth opportunities. Hope you would have got an idea who is an entrepreneur, who takes care of risk and setting up the business and sharing the profits to the entire team and the ecosystem and he will be rewarded well. It may take time like three years or five years or 10 years, sometimes 15 years. Generally, the plan will be, will plan as a straight road, but in reality, it looks more ups and down. You'll be having a lot of falls and a lot of ups. You need to sail in the water. You need to fly in the air. You need to run in the rain. You need to climb up. You will be having a lot of hurdles, but these are all a common man can easily does. It's, it's not at all a doable thing. It's all doable things. The journey will be like this. As you see in the downside, a job will be a, a rotating wheel and the startup will be like you will be taking up a big rock to the top of the hill. So in any entrepreneurship, that is what you set up the business, how you start the workflow, I'll be explaining the steps later I will talk about myself, what are the things I have done and how I took it over. 
So first, it's an idea generation. You have to start with an idea and you have to create a team for executing all of your ideas and thoughts. You need to have a business plan, like where to start, when to start, what are the expenses for the first six months, next one year, after two years, can you sustain yourself? Can you survive yourself? Or you need to get some more finances? You need to have a small plan at least while you are starting. Later, you can change according to your pocket. You need to get related approvals from the government. If you are starting in a pharmaceuticals, you need to have a separate regulations. If it is a, a small setup, in hotel side, you need to get the food licenses, trade licenses, and basic company registrations from your chartered account. He will does. You need to register a company. It could be a individual proprietorship, a partnership firm, a private limited, an LLP, or a public limited company. Anyone will start with a proprietorship or a partnership or private limited company. You need to slowly register with the tax office. This chartered account will take care of it. You need to have a bank account and slowly you need to start the operation. So how an idea looks like and how the an execution look like. Idea is nothing when we don't execute anything. You need to execute it, then only it works, then only the business will run. It's like idea and execution. If you want to be successful in your business, idea is only the first primary part. That is a crucial one that plays only 1%. For implementing that, you need to have this 99% of execution. So you can see if idea is weak, we'll have nothing here in the business. If idea is stronger, multiplied with this execution, a brilliant execution will have a brilliant profits. We generally say when we start a business, it's called as startup. If you are having your family business, that we can talk, we can say that it's a traditional or family business which you have been running from your parents or grandparents. Most of the people, 80 to 70 percent or 60 percent of people, they will have their own startups. A startup, it's like an ink company where you will have start with an idea and you will shoot it like a rocket. It might be find, founded by one or more entrepreneurs to develop an, a unique product or service. So with a small funding or your founders are from external investors, you might start from your own pockets or loan from the bank or friends and families, they start. That we call it as a startup. So steps in the startup is you will start with the idea, you will start it, you will work on it, you will analyze what to do, what not to do, and what are the things you need to recruit and you achieve your goal. First, to start with the business or any startup, you need to do a research, whether it, how does it works, how many people should work on it, what are the finances you need, a little bit of logical plan, slowly get some funds, it can be few rupees, few thousands or few lakhs. Slowly you need to develop it, a blueprint, and physically we need to work in this development. Then we need to test it and then take to the market about our goods or services, what could be it's an ad film or film or starting any cap services, food services, food business, whatever it is. You need to evaluate and then start generating the revenue. For funding, we need to go for the crowdfunding like we need to collect few thousands from our family friends or public you can use public portals now we can apply for the funding 
they will fund you with a small amount starting with the thousands or few dollars. Self-funding where you get funding from your own selling assets or getting from your parents. You can raise money from the venture capitalist or angel investments. Angel investments could be your close person who is an well-wisher. They might invest for you when you go with a proper idea and with a proper plan. So angel investors, these are the percentages you can see what it worked. Family friends, 29% angel investors and venture capitalist, private and public. And this is a little bit of an United States data, 44% from the VCs. And government is also encouraging a lot of startups. Once you have some fund, you need to market your products. How do you market? You need to set up some objectives. You need to find key targets like to whom we can sell our product. Say if it is a nice textbook on a specific subject. Say somehow you got it done. You need to sell it to those specific students. If it is a pen or a pencil to a specific set of school management or school students or shops in the schools. Say you have done some sort of sweet or bakery items. We need to set up our bakery in such a place that it should sell. It should be near the colleges or the youngsters in the cinema theaters. So we need to find the right target personas for your product or services. See, if we keep a gold shop, if we are a gold merchant, somewhere out of the city, no one will come to you and buy it. We need to be in center of the cities along with the other gold merchants. Say if you have set up your gold shop somewhere in there are other supermarkets other than in the gold shops lane, we don't have much sales. We should be in between the gold merchant shops. When your products are good, the people usually come to buy the gold in those specific lanes. They will come to your shop. So we need to be with the competitors. Some business should run like that. So we need to find the key targets. We need to define our value proposition. We need to fix the value for your product, like how much for this we need to keep the price as per the competition or over pricing like keeping it premium or with very low cheaper prices. We need to define that and you need to have best marketing tactics. You might use social media for the digital marketing like Instagram. If it is for youngsters, we need to target Instagram. If it is a mid-level people, we need to target Facebook, YouTube and Google ads. If it is a key services like healthcare services, you need to be in the search engine optimization, in the Google search engines, Bing and Yahoo. We need to learn those basic skills or we need to hide those things. We need to make nice videos, nice pictures and spread over the social media platform. If you are having good amount, we need to approach electronic media like TVs, Telugu TVs or Bollywood or Hollywood, whatever the target it is. It's a Delhi level or a Hyderabad level or B level cities. We need to approach them. Then we need to execute and measure the marketing amounts and then monitor ourselves whether it is producing enough leads, enough business or not. Unnecessarily, we should not waste our money on marketing. Most of the businesses, they waste a lot of money on creating ads and advertising on the TV shows, they waste loads of money, but the return is might be less, few might get very high. For the startups, we need to optimize our amounts and then utilize it properly to get the leads or revenues. You, need, you can think about various business ideas. These are all very vague, I have written it here. Anyhow, we copy it from different sources. It could be a car wash business, a store, grocery store, a dry cleaning. It could be an electronic repair shop. There was an, a successful person in London 
who started a small electronic repair shop, a mobile repair shop. He was standing alone with a very, very small uh, umbrella and the space. He worked for four years and I think he has executed some 2000 retail outlets in around UK. He has become a big rich man for after a hard work of six to eight years. He raised a lot of funds. This is an upcoming area, electronic, computer services, repairs, but there are loads of people also are there on the market, but very few offer a good service. If we are offering a good service, a good rapport with the customer, you will have a returning business every day. So electronics is going to be a bigger size in the coming world. A market research company or a political research company. Most of the businesses that are depending upon the market research and politicians, they they work with a lot of companies who does political research. Where can I get the votes for the pharmaceutical companies who wants to set up pharmaceutical shops, medical shops? They do research in a specific areas. OK, how many people are living in this area and how many people are uh, we can get in as footfalls to our shop if we keep in this area. So a market research company does everything. Like one of my friend runs a feedback company for the hospitals. All the patients will be contacted over the phone and they take the feedback. He, he is nearby your college. He talks to all the patients, to all the hospitals and take the feedback re regarding patient services and he give the reports to the management so that they can improve the hospital services. It could be a food processing company, a packaging company, a business idea I'm talking about, a restaurant, agriculture farming business where you can grow yourself or else you can work with farmers to grow and buy back and then export or supply to the quick service restaurants or food chains or to the customers directly. What we do in our Fresh and Safe Private Limited, we work with farmers, we grow a safe food with the basic chemicals which doesn't harm any person. We use gadgets to calculate the nitrate, sulfite and chloride levels in the vegetables so that it doesn't harm any of the human being. Most of the people are suffering with this cervical, intestinal, breast cancers with these pesticides. I will talk about this if you are interested later, how these pesticides will affect. So farming business is going to be a big one because we need to feed all the people in this world. And one more idea is, is a shop, an e-commerce business, child care services, who takes care of the kids because most of the parents that are going to the works, the, the children to be taken care by someone, photography, dance, yoga teacher, films, ad films, digital marketing companies. There are loads of business ideas out there. You need to check yourself about your ideas or passion, enthusiasm. So before starting a business, you need to make a business plan. On, an, on a simple paper, you can write it down with your handwriting also. When I think Steve Jobs has written his plan on a simple paper with the pen and presented it to the investors. Still, you can search in the Google how he presented it in an A4 sheet with a pen and paper. Most of the investors, they ask to write down their plan with a pen and paper rather than typing on the MS Word or a PPT. So you need to write your executive summary in two to three lines, description, what you do, market analysis like your company is going to be with the competitors or it's a unique or innovative and you need to do the customer analysis. How many customers are there for your idea or for your services? Competitive analysis and you need to define your organizational structure like who will be on the top and who will be on the bottom level, who takes care of your company, how many people will be there and who will be recruiting them and who will market, who, will, who does the sales, who does the accounting. In any company, you need to have a product or a service. You need to market it. You need to generate the revenue. You need to book the 
finances to the government. So this is the general workflow. You need to pay salaries, you need to recruit the people. These are all the basic activities. It happens in all the companies. So you need to define your sales strategy. How can you sell yourself? And how can you do the financial planning and budgeting? So you need to make a plan like this. So the entire business model will be uh, a subset of your business plan and a description how you a business makes money. What are the components of a business model is? Projected startup costs, what it costs for setting up a business and what are your sources for your financing? What is your target customer base? What is your marketing strategy? What is the competition? And your projections of revenues and expenses for next two or three years, that's enough. At least for one year is fine. What you are going to spend and what you are going to get. Initially for next, for generally for first three years, you might incur losses. You should be able to hold it. Most of the businesses, they die in the first year because the quarrels between the partners in the finances and in the work levels, one works well and other doesn't work well. They fight each other and they go away. So most of the business happens like that. And the types of business models are, these are also different models are there. And it depends upon how the company delivers value to the customers, gets them to pay for that value and convert those payments to profits. The different types of businesses are here is like, is it a research company? Is it a manufacturing company or else? Are you a distributor for all the already a produced company? Or like you are a retailer, like you are a shop, you sell the products or you are taking the franchise of any uh, Indian companies or US or UK companies like that. It depends upon these types of businesses. So other types of business models are direct sales, like you will be selling your products directly to the customers, franchising, or do you advertise it? Or brick and mortar is like you do everything on your own, brick and clicks, or else you do on your own and some digital things. Freemium model is initially what it does is you offer some sweeties or chocolates when you if you are a chocolate manufacturer you offer free chocolates to the people to the students and once they get habituated then you will price it that is called a freemium model the premium is when you quote more price when you offer it for free for a few days later they will charge it you can see this geo internet they offered it free for initial days, roughly a 20 crore subscribers now they are paying every month because once they have habituated, slowly they will be converted into premium models. So premium to premium subscription. It's like you subscribe to your milk packets. Every day you get it. And nickel and diamond Air Asia is like when we charge for every service, see a plumber comes in. Today he will charge 500 rupees. Again, there will be a leakage. Tomorrow he will come and charge again a 400 rupees. Again, day after tomorrow. That we call it as nickel and dime. Where you call high touch is when you have a good relation with the customers. When you maintain this, we call this a high touch managed business. And low touch is here, we don't maintain much relation with the customers. That is called a low touch area. The five stages of successful business. Generally, it goes like a triangle. The bottom will be more width and later it will be tip pointed. Initially, you have to have the survival. You need to survive with your idea. You need to be successful and you need to sustain yourself. Then you need to get the significant recognition. Then you will get the success and success. And I'll just uh, I'll just give a break one second. Yeah. Is it fine, madam? Ashwini, madam? Able to hear everything? 
Yes, sir. Yes, it is. It is fine. Yeah, yeah. So till now we spoke about the general entrepreneurship, how it happens, what are the different stages and everything. Now I will generally uh, generalize my journey, how it happened and what are the things happened around my life just for five minutes and later we can uh, wind it out in next 10 minutes. Hope I'm not boring you people. You can stop me at any point hey, this is not able to understand or whatever, you can raise the things, I'm with you, okay? So my journey is like, I started my graduation in agriculture, like everyone tried with the medicine, I couldn't get it. Uh, so I got into agriculture because uh, my family relates to agriculture. Somehow it's a God's gift. I got into this agriculture and then learned some IT skills for job sake in India. I couldn't get an IT job because of the agriculture science graduation. Nowadays everyone is encouraged. Uh, initial IT days they didn't encourage the science graduates. So I left India to UK to do my master's in informatics in science and IT. Later, I got a 50% of funding in Scotland and then for the fee purpose, I need to do part-time jobs in the electronic showrooms like our Reliance Digital. There it is the Curry's Comet. There are a lot of chains. I worked for a few days in hotels and the gas stations. Initially, uh, I thought of what 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 it happens, but because of the fee sake, 20 lakhs is the fee, 10, 12 lakhs I got the funding and for the 8 to 10 lakhs I need to work part time for 18 hours and pay the fee to the school that what you call as a university. There I have learned a lot of simple skills. Simple skills is like how do you face a customer? You think about yourself, you might be doing your graduation or post-graduation. When someone comes and asks you, hey, where can I find a store? Some people will be staring at them, some people will be standing at them, but we need to reply it. The same thing you will learn in a shop. If you don't reply them properly, they will go away. They will move to the other person. Simple skill is like, how do you face a person when they come to you and ask for something and your attitude and behavior? It defines your growth and your life. Guys, try to learn this, understand this point, simple skill, attitude and behavior. There was a saying that aptitude might give you a seat in IIM or MBAs, but attitude will take you to the high altitudes. That keep in mind. What is meant by attitude? It's very hard to understand now. Slowly you will define what is attitude. It is closely to your behavior. How you behave with your friends, how you behave with your parents, teachers, especially with the customers and with the team members. It defines your character and your personality. So that I have learned while doing a part-time job because I have, I have to pay my fee. I need to be more honest and obedient. I have learned from my seniors, all the English people, how they talk, how they behave with the customers. Most of the UK people are good managers. They study very less, eighth, ninth, 10th standard they leave and they will become salespeople and they will become managers in most of the 
shops you see in London and UK. They are very good managers. They talk very well. So up to that, they do very well. So we need to learn such type of skills here in Hyderabad also from the shops, from the managers. We can learn all those. In the end of the day, they will be quite busy and quite harsh. But in the morning time, they behave well. When you go to the gas station, they will put namaste. When you go to a gold shop, they put namaste. When they go to a reliance shop, they put namaste. And most of the shops, they greet well. That is the first skill we need to learn while we do our management studies. Greeting your customer, greeting a person next to you. So I started my entrepreneurship in 2004, started a small company in London, a, and then started offering services. For three years, no one has looked at me. I did nothing. Then slowly, I got some customers without anything. I back to India, developed a few smart software solutions and sold them to the pharmaceutical companies in UK itself. Slowly, I started recruiting the people and started the team. Then in five years of my journey, I started serving the major pharmaceutical companies globally then to the Indian government, Indian government entities, and then private entities in India. First five years, I couldn't do anything. Next, I started it. Slowly, you will get it. It will take three years, five years, 10 years. We need to stick on. Five years, there was nothing, no income. So slowly ventured into IT, sciences, a little bit of into research, then later to my passion area, agricultural. Fresh produce is like vegetables and fruits and then food of snacks. We are venturing it now. We raised funds and we are going into the market with a brand called FNS, Fresh and Safe. We have employed more than 200 people and we took care of few social responsibilities. We supplied clothing, we supplied food to the poor and unhealthy people under the poverty line, we have done up to level. I have spent 90% of our revenues to the team, salaries, responsibility things, very less we need to save because I need to do a lot of things we can do. So it's for you. Are you getting into a startup life or you want to go for a corporate job or you want to be in a startup company as a job holder? You need to decide now while you are doing your graduation or post graduation, you need to decide well. So what I suggest is I think three to four slides are left. These are all the more of a suggestive things for you. If possible, do a part time job while you are doing your graduation. When you are studying in the Bowens, do a part time job of five to ten hours in a week, at least two days. You can learn a lot of sales skills, behavioral skills, good attitude. Save little. It could be a 500 rupees a month. Save it. Keep it in the bank and learn about mutual funds. Don't go for the share market. It's quite volatile. You might lose because I lost a lot of money. But in mutual funds you have. If you put 500 rupees now after five years, you may get 5,000 to 10,000 rupees, it might be doubled. So learn about this. Leave the bad funds, learn the good funds. So I suggest mutual funds. There are few funds, there are experts. It's very easy for you to learn as a management student, especially in the management of finance. You have to learn this. This makes your pocket big. So you can immediately after finishing your degree, you have to start your career somewhere in this job, and gain experience. I suggest if you don't have any business family experience, first start with a job, gain experience, whatever it could be. Film acting, art, dance, food, banker, pharmacist, or a chemist, or a scientist, or engineer. Do some strength and weakness analysis, SWOT analysis, what you know, and check your heart, what inside. What's your passion? Is it, it's about what you like much, what you enjoy much. First, what you need to enjoy much. So get a good business in career. 
or slowly with that experience start a business. These are the general thoughts what I was about to conclude. If you want to get into business, you need to have a good skill, good experience, good finance support. You need to execute it well. You need to be patient and you need to have perseverance. Most of the small and medium scale companies are the backbones for our India. They does the major financial sources. You know, 50%, 60% of the income comes from the small and medium scale companies, not the big MNCs. Small companies does a major role in our Indian economy. Anyhow, job is comfort, cool and happiest. You can do that also, but if you want to achieve lot, you want to give employment, you want to do a lot of things to the society, country, you need to get into the business or could be politics. <laughs> it depends upon you, but career for you, I suggest a nice job. Slowly you can think about the business where you should not lose yourself. Why we talk about this business and startups is in 2023, we are going to be the world population going to be 800 crores. Now the Indian population is roughly 140 crores. In 1922, we were 22 crores. Now we are 140 crores. In 2037, the world population will be going to be 900 crores. In 2057, 1000 crores. Because the population is growing on. We need to offer a lot of products, a lot of service, and we need to produce a lot of food to feed. We need to build the economy. We can do a lot of things. Just you need to innovate, you need to execute, and you need to implement. We can do miracles. And I thought how this is the strong one. This is the last slide. What I, what I generally say is we're all strong people. We are quite strong. Though we're strong, we need to be quite good to the people around you and the society to your parents, families, teachers, and your friends, you need to be quite good. You will get a good brand. And you need to make your society great. We can build our country the greatest. So this is the end of my presentation. So you can ask any doubts or anything. Anything I'm here to answer you all people. Uh, thank you so thank much, you. sir. Uh, uh, students, if you have any questions to ask, you can please raise your hand. I will unmute you. OK, uh, sir. Yes, Abhi, you can go ahead and ask a question. Good afternoon. My name is Abhiram and I'm from BBA first year. I have some couple of questions for you. Uh, actually, I'm so glad to meet you. First question is that, you know, so while recruiting someone, what is the biggest thing you look after as being a CEO of the company? So what is the biggest thing you look after while recruiting? First, I'll see the person, whether they can stick on to the job or not. I will analyze them. And I will see their common and basic skills, how they talk and how confident are they while delivering the speech. I don't look into their English or Hindi speaking skills. It can be any language, whether they are able to talk or not. So very common sense skills we see and very basic speaking skills. If he's into marketing or sales, we think about their talking power, how they market it, how they sell it. If they're a programmer, we'll check about their programming skills and then behavior with the team members, how they behave with the team. If they can't gel well with the team, entire team will be spoiled. So for a programmer, it could be a coding and coordinating skills. If it's a marketing person, how do they look like? How do they talk and how do they present? If it's a management guy, we generally look about all these things. If it's a technical guy, 
we'll see their brain power and coordinating skills. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. And the uh, second yes. question is that what is the biggest mistake uh, people do while running a startup? What is the biggest mistake? What you observe? Assumptions, wrong assumptions. See, uh, think like Elon Musk. Now, who did, who did uh, Tesla in US? If we think about doing a Tesla car here in India, we assume that we can do a Tesla. See, a person like you or like me now, without any experience, we might think we can do a Tesla car, but we don't have any experience or fund anything. A wrong assumption is the biggest problem for the first people they do without any experience or without anything, assuming themselves. Say for a lazy guy, they think about a food truck. They never would have cooked food at, our, at their house or they would have helped their mom or anyone. They want to do a food business. They can't do it because their attitude to be like they might be a good food lover. They might be a good helper in their home or in the kitchen or a good presenter in the food. They should have something in their passion. So we assume things strong. So we need to check our strength, passion, whether we can do it or not. That is the first mistake they do. And they spend unnecessarily with the small pockets when they have and they lose money and then they look around and they close it. So for that, we need to work in the related field. If you want to build a hotel business, we need to work as a ho in a hotel as a steward or a cleaner or a manager or something else in a restaurant. We should work for some time and learn whether we can do it or not, at least for three to five years. Yes, sir. thank you a lot. And my last question is that when uh, when did you learn the most out of it? You know, in the university or outside the university and in your whole journey, uh, what is the biggest lesson you learned? It's all behavior. The biggest lesson I learned is behaving with the people. I learned all the skills outside the school. In the school and college, they will teach you things. How to talk. And behavior automatically comes in when you work with people, when you go with the people. Say you are riding a bike and you met with a small accident. That behavior won't teach in a school or a college. That will be taught by ourselves or by parents or friends how to behave with a small mistake. Most of the people, they fought on the roads, they fight. Most of the skills won't be taught in the schools. So we learn everything outside. In school colleges, it will be the regulations, the timing, the exams and uh, behavior with the students and the lecturers, not with the common people, not with the labor, not with the beggars. You can't learn all these things. And the biggest lesson I learned from outside is behavior and attitude how to be with the people because all if you all of your career is related to your behavior and attitude if you don't have any money if you have more money and if you have skill if you don't have skill attitude behavior yes sir uh, i would like to end this by asking one more question sir actually i didn't yeah. but uh, i Go just on. got in yeah, yes sir. sir i'm really interested in this entrepreneurship and each and everything but i'm so confused that which one should i get into just an example i'm interested in starting this startup i have hundreds of ideas and uh, most of them were applicable i mean i made many these things i got into and this 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 but i'm so confused which one should i choose uh, as an end thing that i need to work on seriously on that particular thing for a few years and uh, do the things okay so abhi you are doing your BBA or MBA now? BBA sir, BBA first year. BBA first year. So, uh, where do you live? I live in uh, near ECL sir. Okay. Any native place? Hyderabad. You are from? Ah uh, yes sir, I'm from Hyderabad itself. And parents are working or they do business or agriculture? No, uh, my father is an employee in railways. Okay. Employee in railways. So he might be teaching you all related to railways and everything probably 
Um, not really, sir. <laughs> we did not really get any kind of a chance. Any but of he, your family members in the business? Any they do uh, any shop or trading? Grandfather, grandfather, grandparents actually. What they did? Normal business, sir. Uh, okay. Irana schools, yeah, that, that okay. one. Nice. So we need to analyze first what you can do well. I hope you can. It seems you are talking well. That's one strength you have. If you, have, you can market or sell the goods very well. That's one thing. We need to look at our family. What family can support? Probably your father might not support anything to you when you finish your degree. He say, go and get a job. Later we will see. But if you are passionate about this, you need to. You need to search in yourself what suits you more. Food business or can I market cars or bikes or can I market the bike services, whatever it is, you need to search and then work in such related business for at least five months to three years. You need to learn all the skill sets. So we see only one side of it. The other sides we learn there from the management, from the team members. Then we need to set up the business. So search yourself. Go to some centers. You can in your degree, you can do a part time job. I have done in a gas station. I'm I worked in the electronic shop like Reliance. I worked in a hotel. I worked in a food processing company. So I used to love talking to the people and helping them and helping in the sales and marketing. So you need to discover yourself. So if you're a good cricketer, you might arrange a lot of cricket matches. You need to have a lot of good connections with the grounds and the stadiums. So if you're a good singer, you need to get into a music band and start your own music band things. So it all depends upon your skill set, what you have, the passion inside, where you are enjoying it much, and then relevant experience and support. If you fail any of the thing, it's better to get into a job because it's a quite risky thing. We might fall from the top. So entrepreneur yes. is like it's like an Olympics medal in a swimming. See, we, we might be all swimmers. Uh, we might think that I can get a Olympic medal. At least we can't get an Hyderabad medal. How can we go to the Olympics level? So we need to level. We need to win at the basic levels. Then we need to think about the top levels. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah, check yes, yourself. What do yes, you sir. like? <clears throat> yes, sir. I got it. You're saying that go search for the things, uh, get into that. After getting into that, see your experience and then get into it. Yeah. If you want to do a truck, food truck business, we need to work with them for a while. If if no one comes in, are we able to cook the food? Are we able to serve? Are we able to clean the plates or not? <laughs> Without doing all this, we yes, get food truck and start the business because one day chef won't come one day your helping team won't come we should be able to do it so yes, we need to get our whether I can do it or not that's a major yes, thing sir. yeah go and get yes. some part time experience and slowly start it yes sir definitely i'll be looking after it uh, it's been a great pleasure sir, to meet you thanks for answering my all questions uh, that's it sir. thank you thanks sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other student would like to ask a question? You can please raise your hand. I can unmute you. Or you can post it in the chat window as well. Students, uh, if no questions, we can go ahead and conclude the session. Uh, if any questions, uh, we'll wait for another 30 seconds. If you can just tell me, uh, I can go ahead and unmute you. Okay. 
So thank you so much, sir. Actually, uh, it was really a great uh, pleasure to hear about your journey, what you have done, and how you have actually uh, faced so much in the uh, in the entrepreneurial journey, and you now you have achieved the success. So I think so it was really an inspiring thing, and I hope students, all of our students who aspire to become an entrepreneur, would take you as the example and would actually learn something from it. And thank you so much for accepting our request and uh, uh, enlightening our students with the new thoughts of entrepreneurs. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much, sir Surendra Garu. It was a great uh, session. Thanks, nice to know about your uh, various experiences in the foreign countries also. Very nice to know that. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Thanks, madam. Thank you so much, sir. So we'll just have a group photograph. So I request everyone to enable the video. And students, I have given permission to enable your video as well. Just I request you all to enable your video so that we can, we can just have one uh, photograph. I request few students, you can go ahead and enable the video. I've given permission. I request the students to enable the video, please. Uh, Madhuri, ma'am, a video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sneha, ma'am, you can also enable the video. Karita ma'am, can you please take a screenshot? Sure. Mm. Oh, Abhiram, you can enable the videos. Rajeshwari, Nilakantam. You can enable the video students. Yes, ma'am, I did. Did it? Okay, good. Okay, thank you, Kavita ma'am. Thank you, students, and thank you so much, sir. It is a pleasure to have you on this stage, and uh, we look forward to have a great association with you in the future as well, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kavita ma'am. Thank you, Sneha ma'am. Thank you, Madhuri ma'am. Thank you, Archana ma'am. Thank you all the students for attending the session. I hope the session was fruitful to you all and any other sessions like this would uh, go ahead and help you out in any in your future endeavors. That is what uh, we would like to be happy about it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank for you. Attending. Thank you, Ashwini. Bye bye. Thank you, ma'am. Ashwini, ma'am. Ma thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.